Good evening. Um, I don't know. I've worked on this for a long time, and a lot of it's actually a lot of what Rex already said. Uh, I don't know. I was trying to think of ways that mine and Joni's situation was different than other people's situation, and really, truthfully, most of it's really not a whole lot different. Um, our day-to-day -day routine's about like everybody else's. Uh, the one thing that was different, though, was that five years ago, I didn't have those three. And I kind of worked when the fish wasn't biting and made sure my bills got paid and my whole world was kind of just hunting or fishing or hanging out in my house. And then I met Joni at work one day. I kind of wish I had a PowerPoint thing because I would have like a picture of the Hiroshima bomb going off. But, um, <laughs> no, not really. Uh, no, actually what really impressed me about Joni was that she raised, she was kind of left to raise those two kids by herself and she did such a great job with them. Um, and she was always interested in the Bible and she always had questions and we, we, we talk about it a lot. And I've always liked kids. Um, so it didn't take me very long to get attached to R2. Uh, I don't know, maybe six months after we started seeing each other, I switched jobs and went to a 12-hour shift and she got on full time uh, and the kids started hanging out at the house more. And before long, on my days off, I'd just keep them while she was at work. And uh, One of the funny things is that before we got married, everybody said, well, your first two years are always the hardest. Uh, that actually was not true with us. Actually, the first two years were really great. It was the maybe three years that we were dating or seeing each other. That was the hard part because we had the kids were back and forth and we were always running them back and forth and we had two houses to clean and two yards to mow and two sets of bills and two bank accounts. And uh, Laundry was a disaster because the kids had clothes at my house and at her house and Jeremiah was walking around in two socks that didn't match because I had one and she had one and he didn't know where anything was. So whenever we got married, uh, all those problems went away real just immediately and it just seemed so much easier to have everybody in the same house. Um, uh, the kids really tickle me. Um, Jackie is exactly like her mom in every way, and they spend a lot of time together, do a lot of stuff together. Joni and Jackie are really outgoing. They like to do 4-H stuff, and Joni's coached some of her sports teams, and they're really into that kind of thing. Jeremiah is a little bit more like me. Um, actually, a lot of times I'm guilty of forgetting that he's only five years old because if I'm in the garden, he's in the garden. If I'm splitting firewood, he's splitting firewood. I actually went to Tractor Supply and bought that kid this little two-pound Boy Scout axe, and the thing is so small and so dull, I can't split kindling with it, but this kid can actually split firewood with it, and I have no idea how. It's actually really amazing to watch. Um, but he pretty much does everything I do. If I'm fishing, he's fishing. He goes hunting with me. And he's just kind of turned into my right-hand man full-time. Um, and that's, that's always been really important to me. That's, that's how my dad was with me and Dustin. If, if he was doing something, we was doing it too. And that's how Mom was with the girls. Uh, that's, that's always been important to me. I think it's important to spend as much time with your kids as you can one-on-one -on -one like that. Um, Proverbs chapter 22 says, To train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from it. Um, just thinking back to when I was a kid, it, it's become very obvious to me that kids learn better by example than any other way. Uh, and my goal personally is just 
making sure that the kids can see that living an honest, simple Christian life is the happiest, healthiest lifestyle you can have. So me and Joni both are really careful to try to show them that and try to try to spend as much time with them, keeping them involved in the things we're involved in. Um, Deuteronomy, in chapter 6, starting in verse 6, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house and on thy gates. And most of the point of that was that throughout your daily routine, you know, it, it should really show that you have that godly mindset. Uh, the one thing about our situation, like I said, that's really different is I got two kids overnight, and one of them was, was a little baby. The other one was eight. And, like, I was just thinking about that the other day. It's like I'm 29 now, and in four years I got a kid that's going to be old enough to drive. So I had to, like, shift gears really fast. Um, but one thing that I picked up on real quick is these kids are like sponges. They just soak up information. Uh, and if you're not showing them good stuff, it just it doesn't matter what you're showing them, they're going to pick it up. So if, if they're not seeing a godly lifestyle, they're going to learn something else. Um, another thing that I learned real quick, and again, I kind of got to give mom and dad credit for this because I just I just picked this up watching them as a kid, is that it's really important for me and Joni to communicate, you know, hey, what's going on with Jackie? Hey, what's going on with Jeremiah? And make sure that we're on the same page. It doesn't do me much good to tell Jeremiah one thing and Joni to tell him something else. Um, it just kind of sends a mixed message. Now, lately, Jeremiah's learned this new trick. And some, I'm sure everybody that's raised kids has already seen this trick. He'll come to me or he'll come to Joni and, hey, can I do this? Well, if I say, no, you're not going to do it. You know, if he don't like the answer, he'll go find the other parent. Hey, can I do this? And some, most of the time our answer is the same, but every once in a blue moon he'll catch you off guard. He caught me the other day. Me and Dad was working in the garden, and Jeremiah was too. After a while, he got bored, and Dad would give him a BB gun, which, you know, what in the world can go wrong giving a five-year-old, you know, but he gave him a BB gun. And uh, Jeremiah comes around after a while, and he says, Dad, can I shoot at that bird up here on the power line? That's one of them little Daisy Red Rider, like the little one cock. I can throw a rock harder than the thing shoots, and the thing's like way up there on the high line. I said, oh, yeah, sure, knock yourself out. I never figured he'd touch it anyways. Uh, that was all fine and dandy, and then Mom comes home, and Jeremiah's telling her, we did this, and we did that, and we worked in the potatoes, and I shot at the birds up on the power line, and Joni says, uh, I told you not to shoot that gun up in the air. Now, that particular day I didn't get in trouble, but you can get in trouble that way. Usually when that happens, Jeremiah is not the one gets in trouble. If he says, well, Dad and Pawpaw said I can do it, well, then Dad and Pawpaw's in trouble. Nine, nine times out of ten. So, you got to kind of watch. You got to make sure you communicate and talk to each other. Um, Any more of my go to response is, what did your mom say? Or, yeah, or I'm going to talk to your mom about that. But um, Ephesians chapter 5, starting at verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the lead, is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be subject unto their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Um, 
I'll read one more verse. Uh, 1 Peter. I really got to work on my handwriting. 1 Peter 3, chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating of hair and wearing of gold, of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in which is not corruptible, even the ornament of, of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a, of great price. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do dwell and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the, great, of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having the compassion, having compassion one of another, Love us, brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Uh, a lot of the reason, for me and Joni anyways, a lot of the reason that it's important to make sure we're on the same page and that we agree on how we discipline the kids and what the rules are and what the standard is, first off, it's just so we don't give, send, you know, give the kids a mixed message. But more importantly... Both of us want the kids to understand that me and mom agree on what the rules are and we respect each other. And again, it's kind of a teaching by example thing, but sitting down and talking things out have really proven to be the best way, you know, to handle that. Um, another thing I learned as a dad is that I got to work on myself. Um, it's really hard to teach your kids something that you struggle with. Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I've always kind of been worrisome. I'm real guilty of worrying, but now that I've got kids, it seems like I worry ten times as much about stuff. Uh, and I know the kids see that, and I'm always preaching to the kids, you know, you've got to work hard for what you, for the things you want to have, and you've got to plan ahead, and you've got to think stuff through. And I know... For myself, how easy, and that's that's all correct, that's all good stuff, but I know how easy it is to take that and step over the line and go into worrying mode. And sometimes I worry about that. Uh, do the kids see me doing that too much, panicking over stuff? And, you know, you kind of got to watch. Um, and again, my, my biggest goal as a dad is just to make sure... I want the kids to go to heaven. I want them to be here at church. I want them to understand that that's the priority. Uh, one of our biggest battles, or one of my biggest battles, is it doesn't seem like, it seems like whether it's sports or 4-H or uh, family get-togethers or whatever it is, everybody wants to plan this stuff on a Sunday. And... It seems like I am constantly telling people, no, we have worship service on Sunday. No, we have church on Sunday. No, no, I can't be there on Sunday. You know, it really gets old when it's the same person over and over and over. You always got that family member that every week you tell them, no, worship service is on Sunday. We got church in the morning. We got church in the evening. And next week you got to tell them again, and they give you that baffled look like this is all new information. That gets really, really, really frustrating. Uh, 
But I want the kids to know that that's the priority. So as much as it drives me nuts, week after week after week, I continue to just tell the same people, no, we have church on Sunday. Yeah, we might be there. We'll be late. You know. Um, and that's kind of all I got. Uh, I didn't come up with a good way of um, ending my short talk. There's a lot of challenging stuff to being a dad. But in my opinion, the reward is a lot greater than the amount of effort it takes. Uh, I just want to close with a scripture. Probably my favorite scripture about being a dad. Um, Psalms 127, starting in verse 3. Lo, children, are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Thank you.